All right, you can turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to show you a very interesting thing for those of you who don't think that the King James Bible is up to date. You're sadly mistaken. Matthew chapter 26, verse 59 through 66. It says here, Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. But found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses, and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God, and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose, and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, we, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Okay? Jesus was murdered by the religious leaders of his day, Basically for one major reason, but also a secondary reason, which we're going to see here as we go through some other scriptures. And that major reason was because he made himself God. He said that I am God manifest in the flesh. That's what he said. He called himself I am another time. And before Abraham was I am, he said, and they took up you know, stones to throw to, to kill him. But you see, Jesus was God, is God, and he, when he comes back, they're going to see that. But the point is, what was the other cause? that they got upset about. Jesus said that he's going to destroy the temple. And they idolized the temple. Let me show you. So we saw Jesus there. What about Stephen? Acts chapter 6. The first saved man after the New Testament comes in, he's the first man to be killed, murdered by, again, the religious leaders. Let's look about that. Starting in uh, verse 9, Acts chapter 6, verse 9. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, same people that put Jesus to death, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, where the new Bible versions come from. Alexandria, Egypt, you can trace it back to there. The King James Bible comes from Antioch. It's a Syrian Bible. If you go back, trace it back. Um... Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suburban men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and called, came upon him and called him, and brought him to the council, and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us and all that sat in the council looked, looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel so it's probably you know I would say where your modern day expression you know they have a face of an angel you know in other words they're just innocent looking and just what I'm not doing anything <laughs> you know but interesting Jesus Christ had false witnesses brought against him, and they said all kinds of ridiculous nonsense against him. And finally, two false witnesses said, hey, he said he's going to destroy the holy place, the, the temple of God, that old Jewish old, you know, the Old Testament synagogue there. And Stephen, after Jesus dies on the cross, and Jesus was referring to his body, by the way, he wasn't referring to that temple over there because it's just a dead building, it doesn't mean anything. And uh, Stephen, same thing happens to him. Hmm. Very interesting there. And you're going to see what I'm talking about here in a little bit. I'm going to show you a news story which brings this whole thing right up to date. Uh, the first century is... We're right back to it again. But you see there again, they're upset about Stephen speaking against their dead building. Why? Because they worship the dead building. To them, the dead building is God, just like most religious people today. 
And the ones that say, oh, no, it's not the building, yes, it is. They have great reverence for it. But let's see another one. Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21, verse 27 and 28. It says here, And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. Talking about Paul. Crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. And further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. Even though when Jesus died on the cross, the, the veil in the temple there separating the you know, people from the Holy of Holies, it just went, just the Lord just ripped it right in half. And there's a whole big study on that whole thing too, what the Lord did with the temple, you know, the Old Testament temple, what the problems with it were and everything else. But again, it starts out with Jesus. Their witnesses that they bring against him say that, oh, he's, he's attacking our holy place. Then it goes to Stephen. Then it goes to Paul. And isn't it ironic that uh, what was the um, punishment that they suggested for each of those three men? Death. And uh, did it happen? Yes, it did. I mean, Paul, he goes to trial and he goes, you know, he's basically in prison for a while. And he's going through the trial thing, but they eventually killed him. They eventually, I believe, beheaded Paul, the Apostle Paul. So... Jesus, Stephen, and Paul all um, were accused of speaking against a holy place that was no more holy than any other building in the town or the city. You say, what's this have to do with modern times? I'm glad you asked. Watch this video. We really had to do very deep uh, cleaning and washing, but we had to use machines to clean the whole place. Muslims at the Lewiston Auburn Islamic Center spent part of the morning on their knees, not for their usual prayers, but to erase any traces of the pig head that rolled into their mosque around 10 o'clock Monday night. We were all praying, uh, focused into the prayers, uh, most of us looking down, and all of a sudden what we had was a big bang. That bang, a frozen pig head hitting the floor. Police say 33-year-old Brent Matthews threw the head into the mosque from an open door. He's been charged with desecrating a place of worship, a misdemeanor. Apparently, uh, he thought he was, uh, you know, uh, that it was going to be a joke type of a thing. Uh, I don't think he realizes, you know, the, their religion and, and what the seriousness is of it. Under Islamic law, pigs are haram or forbidden because they're considered unclean. Muslims aren't allowed to eat or even touch them. It's not only a crime that has happened, but it is an insult onto the faith that we practice. Hmm. Desecrating a place of worship is a criminal offense? A misdemeanor? Really? Isn't that something? So in other words, there are laws on the books that uh, protect a place of worship. And I saw there were some other reports too that uh, people were saying, you know, there's there, the Muslims wanted to build uh, mosques in their area and they're, and they're just like, you know, going and throwing pig parts in there, the people and burying a pig and it's like the Muslims are like, oh, oh you know. <laughs> you got kind of a, a strange religious system there when you're, you're so weirded out by pig parts. You know, take the thing out and, you know, wipe the stuff up and, you know, okay, go on about your business. You know, it's weird. And if you understand the, the New Testament, all the clean and unclean animal stuff from the Old Testament has been done away. All right, uh, if you want scripture on that, I'll give you the, the real good one here. First Timothy chapter 4. Um says, verse 4, For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, verse 3 talks about forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So, Bible-believing Christians don't have to worry about, oh, a pig head came into our place, or, you know, there's somebody dropped some bacon or something like this. Weird. 
But the whole the whole point is, you know, here you have these, you know, Muslims. We call them Muslims because it's Islam and Catholicism. You know, Catholic Muslim. Again, if you don't know about our terms, um, Islam comes from Catholicism. That's why they both venerate Mary. Uh, they both have holy temples. They both have holy cities. They both have idols that they worship. Similarities just go on and on. But the point is, this law of uh, you know going after some guy and saying it's a misdemeanor crime for you to desecrate a place of worship. Isn't that interesting? Because it's exactly what was going on in the first century. And those men were put to death. Jesus, Stephen, and Paul were all put to death. And part of the charges that were brought against them were they spoke against the holy place. See? It's a pagan thing to take a building and make that building somehow holy. The Catholics do it. The Muslims do it. The Buddhists do it. And the professing Christians do it as well. Oh, absolutely they do. Pretty wild.